Welcome back to the channel guys. Well today we're gonna do another unboxing first impressions and update video. This time it comes from my house that I've done a couple of other, uh, I want to say I, I reviewed the other two fragrances that I had from this house. Maybe I didn't, but if I did, I'll link those below, but I, I think that I did. Uh, but, I've, but I have owned two other ones from this uh, house and I want to say I've sold them both since then. They're both good fragrances, but again, I, like I've said in previous videos, I'm just trying to move some stuff out. If, um, if I ever find myself wanting them, like, oh, I wonder whatever, you know, whatever happened to that fragrance. Oh, I, and I'll just go get it again. I'll find a swap or I'll just, you know, shell out the cash. And, and grab it again. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, this is gonna be a, my third uh, fragrance from this house, and it's from the house of BDK Parfum. That is Gris Charnel, which I'm pretty sure I'm butchering that name, guys. Gris Charnel, however you guys want to pronounce it. I think Gris means gray, and I don't really know what Charnel means. Um, so a little bit about this fragrance, guys. Uh, Gris Charnel, and again, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, you guys can cook me in the comments if you want. But I'm just just doing my thing here. Uh, Gris Charnel from the house of BDK Parfums Parfums is a unisex ambery spicy fragrance released in 2019. Uh, the nose behind this fragrance is Mathilde Bijou. I think that's how you say it. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, and it's an eau de parfum concentration, guys. A note to this fragrance. In the top, we have cardamom, fig, and black tea. In the mid, we have uh, iris and vetiver. And in the base, we round things off with sandalwood and tonka bean. So this has kind of a... a, a Kind of a minimalistic composition. There's not a, a whole lot going on with this. Just like uh, five or six uh, notes here, so, which is kind of good, I guess. Keeps it kind of plain and simple. Let's take a look at this at this uh, presentation, guys. I do like um, the box here. Nice and... Uh, it looks a little plain, honestly. The first time I ever saw this, I thought it was a tester box. Because I want to say they all come in white. Could be wrong about that. But the, the three that I had, one came in blue. And I think the uh, other one came in white, maybe. Um, and then this one is also white. It does have a little bit of information here. I'm guessing you can like um, store them kind of like like little books. So it has like some information here on the spine, some information on the back, a little bit on the bottom, some ingredients and whatnot. It does have the notes here on the front as well. Um, so I'll go ahead and take this part out and show you guys the cap here. Nice, heavy, sturdy, thick um, cardboard here. So that's always nice to see nice cardboard on there. You know, it keeps it nice and safe so it doesn't, you don't have to worry about the bottle breaking. Uh, it does have some foam on the inside to keep the bottle safe. And yeah, again, heavy, thick, sturdy cardboard here. Let's check out the bottle, guys. Um, yeah, I mean, these are these are pretty nice bottles. I do like how it kind of wraps around like so. We do have like the name here and then the name of the brand. So if you kind of like set it on your shelf, like at an angle, you can kind of see uh, both sides there. That's kind of nice. Uh, plastic cap. No, it's actually metal, I think. Uh, and it does say BDK on top. Not sure if you guys can see that or not, but it does say BDK on top. Black atomizer, guys. Yeah, let's go ahead and get to the best part. That's going to be the first impressions. I will say, I think I went to the scent room and I, I don't think I tried this one, but I want to say I got maybe just the nozzle of the x which is the, uh, I think that's what it is, the, the newest, stronger one that just came out. Um, the reason why I got this one, because I did see someone swapping or selling the x is because people are saying this one's better than that one. People are saying, like, I don't even know why they invented um, the x rate version because the EDP is better and it's still really strong. Again, I can't confirm that. Obviously, I've never tried, uh, I've never worn either one of them. Uh, I want to say I just maybe barely got my nose on the nozzle of the other one. But I think this should be, um, I, should, I don't really remember what that one even smelled like, so it should be like a blind first impression here, guys. So let's go ahead and get to the best part, guys. The first impression. This will be my scent of the evening. Um... And uh, really looking forward to trying this one. I do like some of these notes in here. I love fig. Black tea is always really nice. Um, and who doesn't love iris? At least I know I do, right? If it has that lipstick touch to it, we'll see. Um, sandalwood and tonka bean. Let's check it out, guys. A couple sprays here. I did just get kind of a little bit of a waft from the nozzle. And I did get a little bit of that sandalwood. Really nice sprayer on this one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely getting some of that iris, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of the lipstickiness, but I'm getting some of the uh, some of the fig. The fig's really nice in this, so it's like fig and iris. Not a lot of that lipstick note, but it's there. Uh, the fig is really nice with this one. Okay, now now the the iris is really starting to pop. Not as thick or as lipsticky as DHI, but it's there. I'm definitely getting that. The fig is in the background. But it's still there, nice and fruity. Very, very spicy, warm, spicy. 
And what I was going to say before I, I actually smelled it was that I got a little bit of the sandalwood that kind of reminded me a little bit of Santal 33. That was just in the air. I'm definitely not getting that right now. I'm sure it's going to, that, that'll probably come out a little bit later. Because there is a little bit of that Santal 33 pickle, pickle note in there. But it's, it's, it's sort of mixed up with all these other really nice notes that I'm liking here. Yeah, this smells nice. I can see why, why people were liking this. This is the one that everybody was talking about. This, to my, in my opinion, was the darling of the house. Because, uh, and it's funny because it was the, this is like the third one that I've gotten. I, I got, well, I got the other two from Brandon because he would, you know, he's kind of like me, but he does it a lot more than I do. He'll buy, he'll catch and release a lot. And I happened to get those from him and he gave me a great deal on both of them. So I couldn't pass it up. But yeah, this smells nice. Um, yeah, very, it's a little, little, it's a little dark. It's a, it's got the iris note. It's got, it's a little bit of fruity with the black, with the, with the fig. I do get a tea note. But it's not super overpowering. The cardamom in this is really nice, very nutty. It's kind of dry and nutty and sexy. Yeah, this is a nice fragrance. Right now, I can't really think of anything that this really reminds me of. I'm sure I've tried other fragrances. It's sort of like I've named a couple of things here, like the Santal 33. Sort of, sort of some nuances here. Maybe a little bit of that that lipstick note from a couple of other fragrances that are similar. But yeah, right now this is a this is not bad at all. Um, Gonna be kind of hard pressed to find out what the best weather to wear this uh, fragrance in because it's not super sweet. There's not even vanilla in this. Like it's sweet, but it's like fruity sweet from the fig. I'm guessing, and maybe some of that tonka bean. But it's 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 a little it's it's very uh, subtly sweet. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely see why this one's called a amber spicy fragrance. I'm definitely getting that. It's, it's spicy, warm, spicy. Uh, maybe even fruity spicy, if that's even, um, if that's even a thing. But yeah, again, I can definitely tell what people were talking about this one. It smells really nice. It's going to come down to, uh, performance and the dry down maybe, but the opening around this one is nice. I, I, I will say that uh, I got this one in a swap. Um, a lot of people have been getting rid of this one lately. Again, not sure. Maybe because winter's almost gone and, and I might, I'm not trying to give too much away about the seasons just yet, but I don't think it's just going to be for winter. I'll I'll just say that for now, which I like. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give this for uh, Where's Fragrance tonight. Over the next couple of days, give you guys an update shortly. Talk to you then. All right, guys, welcome back to the update for BDK's Gris Charnel, Grease Charnel, however you guys want to pronounce it. I'm not French. I live in Texas, guys, so please don't beat me up in the comments too much, guys. What did I think about this fragrance? I liked it, Okay. We started off with a lipsticky iris note, goes into a sweet, fruity fig note that at times kind of comes off a little bit like coconut, and it's probably because it's mixing with that sandalwood, not really sure, but sometimes fig to my nose, just it mixes really well with coconut, and sometimes I actually get that that sort of smell with this, and there's no coconut in this, but I do kind of get that. Um, I liked it. Um, yeah, that, that iris opening was really, really nice. Like, it does remind me a lot of the other uh, lipsticky cosmetic bag, DHI, all the fragrances that I mentioned before that have that similar iris opening. This one has it as well, and I'm not mad at that. And and I didn't know that you could uh, mix that iris note with fig. I think it's a good combination. Um, it's a little different. Um, not niche and super dairy or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's a niche fragrance. But this one does come off as mainstream. It actually does smell very pleasant. It's very sweet, very fruity. Um... There is, the tonka bean's really nice in this as well. I don't get like a cherry type of fragrance uh, like I do with some other tonka bean fragrances. Um, but this one does have a slight bit mixing with all these other notes. There's like a slight bit of a cigar shop. And I can't remember if I mentioned that in the first half of the video. But but I do think, got a, I got a little bit of like a cigar shop type of smell in the sillage. Um, but this doesn't, uh, obviously doesn't have tobacco or anything like that in it. But it just gave me a little bit of that feel. Nice and warm, spicy uh, in the dry down and sweet. Um, and if I can compare the dry down to slightly something that's, that's a little designery, it's going to be stronger with you. Um, and that's just, again, barely. I mean, I know some of you guys are probably laughing out there saying, oh, you're crazy. That's the only thing I can really compare it to. But this is a nice fragrance. I do think that this is a very, uh, approachable niche fragrance and you're probably going to get some good attention. Actually, I got attention with this one and we'll go ahead and get to the ratings in this one. Longevity, I got this one was great. Eight hours, uh, eight or eight hours every time I wore this fragrance. Um, the projection of this fragrance. Now this is going to be the only, maybe the only downfall. It's not for what you're paying. Now you can probably get this for like 150 bucks online discounted. Um, but I want to say these sell for a lot more. 
it didn't it didn't jump off my skin as much as I wanted it to. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing, right? Sometimes people don't like super loud fragrances on them. Um, I happen to, but I when I, I wore this one a few times, and when I was I was at um, Walgreens, I was buying some medication, and the lady said, "I love your perfume. I don't know what you're wearing." She actually said cologne, but I love your cologne. It smells really really good. She's like, "It's really nice." She's like, "But it's not too much. It's very subtle." So that was her word, and I'm gonna use that word as well. The projection's very subtle. You're gonna get nice nice little wafts of it, and I probably had it on my skin for about an hour at that time. Um, so it was still pretty fresh on my skin. Um, but yeah, eight hours of longevity. You're not going to fill up a room with this one, but you are going to get noticed. It has decent little projection for an EDP. I wish it was a little bit stronger, but it's not bad. It's maybe like an EDP concentration of like, a, uh, that a designer would put out, right? Cause sometimes those are a little bit weaker than some of the niche stuff, but it's not awful guys. Um, seasons for this fragrance. If you guys haven't guessed already to my nose, this is going to be cooler, colder weather. Not, this isn't strong enough to cut through super duper cold. So I'm gonna say like, um, maybe, uh, you know, fall, maybe winter, but early spring. Just just cool, with, uh, you know, weather. Um, again, like I said, if it's like, you know, 20 degrees outside, maybe in the first couple of hours, you'll get noticed wearing this one. But I don't think, overall, I think it's gonna be better for more cool climate because you're gonna need a little bit of like, almost not warm, but just a cooler uh, type of um, temperature to, to kind of set this one off. It's going to need a little bit of push over that finish line to, to help with, with the sillage in this one. But again, it's not it's not weak by any means. I'm just saying, like, if you, you know, it's just not going to cut through that cold is what I'm trying to say. Occasions for this fragrance. Evening. Evening occasions. Date night. Uh, suit and tie. This is a sexy fragrance, guys. That iris note, I do love. I love that iris note. It's so sexy. I didn't know that it would mix real, well with uh, with fig, and it, but it does. And it this is, I think the fig note mixing with the iris note and maybe some of that tonka is what kind of gives it a little bit of that, that cigar shop feel. Um, I wouldn't expect this one to smell like that. And I wouldn't really tell people, Hey, if you want to smell like a cigar shop, buy this one. Cause there's other fragrances that explicitly want, you know, make their, um, fragrances like that. And this isn't going to be one of them, but it just, if you like that sort of sweet sort of, uh, powdery, you know, type of, uh, faint sort of cigar, you know, smell that you get sometimes, then you're going to like this one, guys. But yeah, evening, evening events is going to be perfect for this one. This is safe for work, even though you're, you're, you're going to be at work, um, you know, during the day. I just mean like it, it's, it, it's a professional setting. And if you dress nice at work, this would be perfect for that. Um, ages for this fragrance, I'm going to say are 25 and up. I think you can easily afford this one at 25. If you get, if you find it discounted, don't get me wrong. Again, I'll put the retail price up here, but I do, I do think you can find this one fairly discounted. Um, on some um, other sites like Joma Shop and, and some other sites like that. Um, unisex Factor. This one at times in the opening does have a bit of femininity to it. I think it's maybe in the iris or something. Something in this does give it a bit of femininity, but I do think it's right down the middle. Uh, I think when you get to the dry down, it's going to get more masculine. So if you're sort of nervous in the beginning and you're like, oh, I'm not sure this smells a little perfumey. Um, I think that once it dries down a little bit, you'll start to, to really get a feel for the masculine side of it because it is warm and spicy, nice and woody. Um, but yeah, overall guys, I think it's a nice fragrance. I do think it's a, it's a good offering. I don't think it's going to be for, for everybody. I happen to love Iris. And so that's the reason why I like this one. I can see why some people were selling this one. Cause I want to say, I mentioned that in the first half of the video where people were jumping ship on this fragrance and you know, people would hype it up. And then like the next week, two weeks later, you see everyone's selling their bottles, right? And so I wondered why that was. Um, I happen to like it. Will it make the cut in my collection? Not sure yet, guys. I gotta. I really got to weigh out my options and go, okay, do I want to keep this one? Do I want to explore this one further? I do like this one, but I do have a bunch of other fragrances that have that iris opening that are a little bit, honestly, heavier and a little smokier and a little more masculine. And the first one that really comes to mind was that Ralph Club's Elixir. Man, I love that fragrance. I don't know if you guys have tried that one yet. I really, really enjoy that one. It's not for everybody, but it's got a rugged masculinity to it, mixing with that iris note. And this, this and that one's way stronger than this one as well. Um, but this isn't bad. Um, but I do think that um, try before you buy. Um, I think if you wanted to blind buy this one just because you have the money, it, I think it's going to be safe. If you like the Irish note, the lipsticky cosmetic bag, and you like fig that comes off as co coconutty a little bit, and you like warm, spicy with some tonka bean, then you're going to like this fragrance. I think you you are going to like this one. But when it comes to these expensive ones, I will recommend you guys just, you know, finding a sample. You guys go to the Fragrance Decant Boutique. My, my good friend Tim runs that shop. This is not a sponsored video, but I will give him a shout out and say, uh, hey, if you guys, uh, I don't even know if he has this one. But for all of your decant needs, you guys can go to, uh, is it decantboutique.com? I think that's what it is. But I um, just want to give him a little shout out real quick. But um, yeah, guys, 
I do like this fragrance. Again, we'll see if I decide to keep it or not, but I do like this one. I think it has a really good longevity. The per performance is great, except for a little bit of that projection. But again, it's subtle. And sometimes that's good, right? It's not, it's not an awful thing if you're not reaching somebody across the room. Um, but yeah, I, again, I did like this one. Not my favorite. Um, if, if I had to choose out of the three BDKs that I've tried, this might be uh, number one. Yeah. And then with Citrus Riviera and then um, Rouge, um, the red one. I can't remember what it's called. Something Rouge. Uh, well, probably three. But... Those, those are the ones that I've tried from the house so far. But yeah, I did like this one again, guys. Try before you buy. And yeah, I think that might wrap things up for this for this fragrance here. Let me know your thoughts on, on um, Grace Charnel from the house of BDK. If you like this fragrance, if you hate it, am I crazy? Just let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking about this one, guys. Let me know if I'm crazy or not for liking this one, guys. But thank you guys so much for watching another video on my channel. If you like this video, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications for future first impressions videos and fragrance any content just like this, guys. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, dollars and cents. There, you'll find first sided photos and future contest winners. And as always, until next video, you guys take care. Thanks.